Hello and welcome to Muddy Paws Crime Live. Um, this evening we have with us Julie, who is the owner of the stolen dog Amber. So thank you, Julie, for coming on for this fresh appeal for Amber, which is so important um, for anyone with news to come forward. Um, for those that don't know about Amber, can you explain what breed, um, age when stolen, age Amber would be now, please? Um, Amber is a um, chocolate brown working cocker spaniel. Um, she's got quite a distinctive white marking on her. Um, we can talk about that a little bit more later on. But yeah, I'll show a slideshow as well. Yeah. Um, but um, she was eight, or well, she is eight. Um, she'll be nine in March next year. Um, we've had her since she was um, five. Um, she, we are a fourth family. Um, she had a quite a hard start, bless her, um, and was rescued from the owner. We rescued her. Well, we didn't rescue her. We rehomed her from a family friend, but they had her from a rescue centre. And prior to that, she'd been locked in a shed for eighteen months. So this is why it's so hard um, to think yeah. about us now. I can imagine. Um, and when was Amber stolen and where from with the circumstances, if you know? So, yeah, so Amber, uh, I was walking her. Um, so I have to go back a little bit so you understand a little bit about what Amber was like. Um, before we had her, um, the people before us wouldn't even, couldn't even let her off the lead. She was, had such a strong prey drive. Um, when we took her on, our aim was to be able to get her to be off lead um, and to be able to live a life that a dog like that should be able to live. Um, we worked really hard with her all the way through the lockdowns. My partner would be out with her for hours and hours and hours. Um, and we got her to the point where she would follow, she would come back. The only problem that we did have with her is her prey drive would just take over absolutely everything else. Um, I always used to describe her like a drug addict, it's like she was on crack or something like that. If she got the whiff of something, she would be off. So we bought a tracker this time last year and we never left the house without it. She, it was on from the minute we left. And um, the morning that she disappeared, um, I walked her on our normal walk. Um, I was going to do a short walk because we had quite a lot going on. And um, I got to the field where we would normally let her off lead, um, which is an enclosed field. And she was like, oh, no, mum, can we go a bit further? And I thought, oh, I'll take her up a bit further up the lane and then we'll walk back along the beach. It was a bit of a longer walk for her. And we got quite close to a big holiday camp. It's Devon Cliffs Holiday Camp. And it's not like you would imagine a field with a few caravans in. There's circa 15,000 pitches up there. So it's like a small town. Yeah, it's one of the biggest, isn't it? Mm. And um, she was just sniffing in the hedge behind me. And all of a sudden, I, I turned around and she wasn't there. I was calling her. And we also had not only the tracker, but we had a falconry bell on her as well. So you could hear her if she was... Um, close by the hedges were really thick and really high and I put the, the live tracking on straight away and she just she was following something chasing something um, I ran up the lane sort of parallel with the way she was going from the tracker I couldn't get through the hedge it was too high and too thick I couldn't see anything she went into a small bit of woodland and she was chasing whatever it was around that and then it looked like she was coming back I thought oh gosh she's coming back thank god and then it the tracker signal shot across the little lane that we were, that I was in, um, and but I was obviously in the field by now, trying to trying to catch her. And she went into the other field on the other side of the road um, and down towards a small copse, which is about two hundred square meters, no more than that. Um, and I couldn't see her the whole of this time. I didn't see her. I was just following her on the tracker, running as fast as I could to try and catch up with her. I phoned my partner at that point and he came from the bottom of the, the fields at the bottom on the other side of this copse to meet me in the middle. Couldn't see any sign of her, couldn't hear the bell. Um, the tracker signal stopped about 30 metres outside of the wood, this little wood. Um, and we assumed that she'd gone down a hole or something that's what we assumed that was the closest sort of thing to us and we hunted around this woodland 
about an hour. No, literally no sign of her. She, it's like she disappeared off the face of the earth. There's no sign of the tracker. We we sort of hunted around that area, but again, thinking she was in the wood because that's the closest signal we got. Although it was out in open field that the last signal was was found from sent from her. Um, and no sign. So we at this point thought, oh my God, she's gone. She, you know, she's down a hole. She's stuck somewhere. Um, the fire brigade came out the following morning. Um, they put cameras down any holes that were in the area. No sign of anything. And the holes all narrowed as they went in. So she couldn't have got down them. Um, so at that point, we realised that she wasn't, she wasn't in any of these holes. We then managed to get hold of a scent dog. Um, in fact, we, we ended up getting four different dogs. Um, they didn't pay any attention to the holes and, and everyone was saying she's not she's not down the hole. She's nowhere near them. Um, the tracker signal took us down to a small lane which led out onto the road at the bottom of the, of the cops. Um, well, that's the way the dogs were going. Um, and, th and that was it. We never saw anything of her from that, that moment on. And um, the where it led you to is that on the way to or the way from Devon Cliffs? Um, yeah, well, it's it's the the lane sort of is in between the road at the top, which goes to Devon Cliffs, and the road at the bottom, which goes into the village and and to another smaller holiday camp at the bottom bottom of the hill. So we, I mean, surrounded really by holiday camps and and mm. people that were you know unknown to the area. Um, may seem a silly question, but did you contact all of the holiday camps? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, the sand, the the Devon Cliffs. We went. I went straight there on the Saturday morning to say, you know, in fact, Richard went there on the Friday night and spoke to the gate. Um, I I went back there on the Sunday, a Saturday morning, um, and spoke to them again. Um, I didn't feel that they really were taking things very seriously um subsequent to amber disappearing a little dog that was staying on the camp went missing and they pulled out all the stops they had security guards looking for it and and all you know that sort of thing and i think probably because it was a guest it was a different attitude to what it was with us yeah. and, you know, our dog was a local dog and out in the open and you know we we it, it would have been very easy for her to get in there without anybody seeing her and you know if anybody was cooking barbecues it was a beautiful hot day she would have gone straight to any food source as soon as she stopped chasing whatever it was she was chasing did any of the camps check cctv at all around that time that she went missing we asked them to um they said the police would have to request cctv and the police wouldn't do anything without us having evidence that she had been taken by someone had i seen someone take her they said they would have come but because i hadn't seen anything they wouldn't they gave me a crime but that was it yeah I'll just i mean that was kind of my next question uh, did you contact the police mm. were they helpful did you get a crime reference number got a crime reference number but it took three attempts to do that mm. and you're with devon and cornwall police i gather yeah yeah, I mean, they generally do take pet theft quite seriously, but um, you must have got a, um, an off officer <laughs> as such. Um, it, and can you just remind us what date Amber was stolen? 27th of May. Right, OK. So the camps would have been quite busy at that um, time as well. It, yeah, it was the week before the Jubilee. So... Right. It, Absolutely heaving. I mean, the town was busy. The the camps mm -hmm. were very busy. Changeover day is Saturday morning, so you know it would have been very easy for someone to pick her up and be away. You know, yeah. before we, I mean, bearing in mind that the 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 fire crew didn't come out till the Saturday morning, we weren't. You know, at that point, we still thought she might have been down a hole, so she could have been long gone before we even started stop searching. Yeah. And was she the sort of dog that would go up to a stranger or be coaxed very easily? Loved everybody. She loved everybody. She would walk up to anyone. I'm talking about her in the past tense and I know I shouldn't be doing that. But she, I mean, if we have fans here, you know, we, we live in an apartment block. Um, and um, 
anybody who comes here to service the building, she goes straight up to them. She loves the van. She always thinks that workmen have sandwiches, you know, and she walks up to anybody she meets with a tail wagging. Um, I know my dog. And when she finished chasing whatever it was she was chasing that day, she would have walked up to the first human being, especially if it was a, maybe a dog walker or somebody like that, walk, walk up to them, a family. You know, she loved kids. I've got grandchildren. She loves my grandchildren. You know, she would walk up to anybody with her tail wagging, you know, roll on her back to have a tummy rub. She, you know, she loves everyone. She, she's just such a friendly dog. She doesn't bark. You know, she's just, she's just a wonderful dog. Sure. Um, Karen's just asking in the comments, do you think the tracker ran out of charge or turned no. off? It had no. It had forty eight percent charge when it stopped, when we lost signal. I um, contacted Tractive tra Tracker three times um, because I wasn't satisfied that they really had given me any information at all. And on the last attempt, I actually message. I emailed them and said that I, you know, I wanted someone senior to contact me. That I felt that they were culpable in the loss of my dog. Um, you know, because we focused all our attention on that area because that's where the tracker said she was. Yeah. And, um, they said it had been damaged. You know, mm -hmm. and live in an field. And, we, you know, and I never saw her. I never saw her from the minute she disappeared in that lane. I mean, there was a signal, a tracker signal, which took her, you know, all sort of around and about. She was clearly chasing something. Um, we think it's a fox uh, more than a deer because of the way it was looping backwards and forwards to try and lose her. Um, you know, because we had all of that on the tracker, tracker signal. Um, and, um, you know, they, they, they say it's been damaged. A couple of people have put into the comments, did you ever find the tracker? No, no. I got, um, after a couple of months, because you go round and round with this, you know, could she be somewhere? Could we just not find her yet or something like that? So I put out an appeal on Facebook and some really lovely people came with um, their metal detectors and went all over that area to see if there was any bits of the tracker left, you know, if maybe she was somewhere and we couldn't see her, that the tracker would still pick up the, the metallic tracker. Nothing at all. Yeah. I mean, I hate to ask this, but... Um... Did you like check with the highways if there'd been any accidents or anything? Yeah, we've done all of that. Um, I mean, it's miles away from any rail lines, but we've checked with the, the, with the railways as well. We're close to the coast. We had the RNLI out, going along, doing a shore search, looking up at the cliffs, gone over a cliff and was, you know, we, we I mean, it, the, the cliffs are fenced off. There's stop proof fencing between where she disappeared and where the edge of the cliffs are. Um, and also we checked what time, you know, the tides were that day because the height, you know, she'd gone straight off and hit the water and then gone out to sea. Um, but the high tide was much later in the day. So someone would have seen her. She'd have been running around. Yeah. Um, and can you explain, I mean, we can clearly see, but can you explain the impact that it's had on you and your family? <laughs> I mean, I'm myself because she was with me the day that we went out. I didn't have to take her that route and I regret every minute of every day that I did. Don't, don't, don't feel guilty. It, um, you know, I had one job to do and that was keep her safe, you know. And my partner, he's devastated. Every night he goes out and gives his good night to her. But it just breaks my heart. I'm having therapy for her work. Is, my job is very intense and um, I have to concentrate and um, they've been absolutely amazing and they've arranged for therapy for me yeah. um, to try and, and deal with it I mean I'm not going to get over this but it, to try and deal deal with it and cope, have a coping me mechanism yeah well let's just hope some information comes of this live um, you know Oh, just a quick question, um, Amber being microchipped, are you keeping an eye that the details are up to date and if she's been scanned at all? I've, um, I've on advice from other lost dog owners, um, I've also, she's with Pet Log, which I was rather concerned about at first because I found out that they'd lost a lot of um, owner data. 
Mm -hmm. All the things you find out once this happens to you is unbelievable. And I really wish I'd known it a year ago, two years ago. I would have put so many other safety guards in place, you know, what we didn't know. The first time I ran Petlog, even though I'd registered with them when we first got Amber, um, they said, oh, we haven't got your details, but I had enough information on the previous owner for them to register me. And um, I've also now gone with Pet Scanner as well, so that if she gets scanned, it will alert me on my phone. And I've checked that several times that it does work. Um, I've also rang around all the vets in the area myself, even though they say that they will alert vets within 30 miles, sent them posters of amber, asked them to, if they've had a, an adult um, working cocker registered with them in the last five months. Um, I've only had one response from any of the vets, even to say no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, one of the reasons we ask for the impact is that, you know, we hope this reaches somebody that has information or that has amber, um, you know, it, it's ripping a family apart and dogs have feelings too. We just really, really plead with, inf you know, for information. Um, we'll show you Amber's Facebook group in a minute. You can get in touch with group admin. A quick shout out to Addy Summer, who I know is amazing for you. Um, your main admin. I can't thank her enough. I mean, I really wish I'd known about you guys five months ago um i mean we have had help from some other um lost dog charities um but from the point of getting the information out there getting getting amber's face and 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 history known on on social media i mean addy has been incredible i, it, is, I yeah. you guys have, have saved lives in this because you know not not just me but all the people that are affected by this i i you know i don't know how somebody could take somebody else's pet because you know it's they are part of your family it's not yeah. you know it's not i mean gumtree i can't even look at gumtree the amount of dogs that are being put up for sale now one and two year old dogs that oh i can't give it the life that it needs and all this you mean you can't be bothered yeah. you know it it just breaks my heart that someone has got a dog that is so loved as amber and loves us so much you know she would follow us she wouldn't even go in the garden without us she would come back up to the house you know we'd go go on amber and we'd hide behind the wall and she'd come looking for us you know she just loved us um you know it was like she would found her home at last and if someone keep a dog like that when there are so many needy dogs out there that need a home um i just i just don't understand it i really don't yeah, well let's try our best to get amber home for you and as soon as possible um we work very closely with Addy. She's lovely, hardworking, such a caring lady. Um, you know, Muddy Paws will do all we can for you as well. Um, I do have a couple of ideas I'll speak to you after about. Um, what we'll do now, um, j just wanted to touch also on, I know that you feel very guilty, Julie, but you, you're not to blame for a thief's greed, you know, or for anyone stealing Amber or anyone not coming forward with information. Grief is part of, um, we actually do a private support group with a counsellor and, um, you know, you, 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 when your dog passes away, it's hard enough, uh, but you have closure, you know what's happened. But when you don't know what's happened to your dog, where your dog is, it, it's the non-closure that causes so many different feelings. So please don't feel guilty. You know, you, you love Amber so much and you did everything you can and you're doing everything you can to keep, you know, to get her home. So please, I know it's easy for me to sit here and say, but please try not to you feel understand. guilty. I, you know, at the end of the that, I don't think I'll ever, I'll ever lose that. Not mm -hmm. only me, but what is done to Rick what it's done to amber um i can't even think about what might be happening to her i haven't even i can't I'll yeah wait. i know well, what i'm gonna do now um julie i'm gonna uh, show a slideshow of amber um i hope my internet holds up i do apologize in advance if it doesn't um if the slideshow doesn't work properly we will put it into the comments after for everybody to have a look at any markings or you know just please keep a lookout for amber 
uh, if you're a friend, neighbor, family member, or someone who has amber, or who has information, you're not going to get in trouble or keep saying this, you're not going to get in trouble with the police. The owners just want their dogs home. That is why we're doing these appeals. Okay, so I'm just going to show um, the slideshow. So this is Amber's Facebook page, Stolen Amber Exmouth EX8. You can get in touch with group admin at this group if you have any information, or you can contact myself at Muddy Paws Crime. Of course, uh, there is a crime reference number with the police also, but if you don't want to speak to the police, you can speak to group admin or Muddy Paws Crime in confidence. Such a beautiful dog. Please look at her markings very carefully when you're, you know, having a look out for Amber. There is so many brands out there, I know. I've been chasing people around the town ever since she went. Um, but she, her markings are really distinct. You know, that cross on her chest, she, she, the white goes all the way down her belly. She's got a thin white line. I mean, a lot of brown cockers have a, a white muzzle, but that thin white line is quite rare. Mm -hmm. And most distinctive of all is her leg. You know, she, she's got an injury to her right foreleg. And there's a scar, about three inches on that leg. Um, she has a very slight limp, so. Right, okay. So everybody, please look out for that. Any dog that looks like amber limping it's a very slight limp it's almost well it, when we had her we had her on you move and it really came on uh, but that but that wrist joint on us is fused so when she's at a trot she's on got a slight limp when she's running you can't see it but when she's got and well, when she's slow walking you can't see it but when she's that fast walk that you would do with the dog on a lead she's 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 got a slight limp there you can see the leg there it's sort of that <laughs> Yeah, just go back to the leg. Oh, bless her. She doesn't look at there. <laughs> she's busy, you know, she's never stood video. <laughs> She looks so different when she's got a long coat to when she's got a short coat and she was clipped short the week before I lost her. Um, I clip her myself and um, she was quite short and she looks a lot younger when she's clipped short and I'm wondering whether somebody thought they could breed from her or something like that but she's afraid. You can't hunt her because the minute you let her on something she's gone you know and she will kill anything she catches. She, she really is you know seriously murderous like that. Um, but you know, such an angel. I've just, I miss it so much. <laughs> um, so if the thief is watching, or anyone with information is watching, or we ask people to share this around um, nationwide as much as possible, um, it will go on Twitter, it will go on YouTube also, um, and obviously all over Facebook. What would your message to the thief or anyone who has information be? Please, please let us know where she is. You can contact her. You can take it to the vets and say you've been. I really don't care about 
about you at all. I just want my dog back. You know, she is not an easy dog. You know, she she needs exercise. She needs a brain stimulated. If someone's keeping her indoors all the time or keeping her in a shed or a kennel or something, she will not be a happy dog. She'll be trying to get her way, way out. She'll be trying to dig out. You know, bearing in mind, she spent 18 months of her young life it, locked in a shed, you know, oh. and we were able to have that dog running free in a field, you know, enjoying life, running around with other dogs. It's just so unfair. Please, please give her back to us. She should be with us. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you, Julie. I, I know it's really, really difficult for you to do this, but also really important because we want to get Amber's, you know, face out there as much as possible for you. Um, so for myself, if anybody has any information at all, please, please come forward. As myself and Julie have said, it, it's not about the police. It's not about you getting in trouble. I just want Amber home. She had a bad start in life as it is. Please let that little girl go home. You know, her family needs her. She needs her family. She's not your dog. There's plenty of other dogs you can buy. Just please let Amber go home. Um, well, thank you, Julie. Um, if anybody um, is a member of Amber's group, if you can keep sharing, inviting people, share the live wherever you can um, so people can see the impact this has had on Julie. Um, if you're not a member of Amber's group, can you please join up and also please, please share. Um, I'll put the slideshow into the comments so everybody can take a look properly at Amber's markings. If Julie thinks of anything else in the meantime, she'll put a comment into the comments, you know, for something specific for you to be looking out for also. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. Um, myself and Karen Field, we do a live appeal for the stolen sheepdog from Limerick in Ireland. And also I'll be back Tuesday with the uh, family member, uh, sorry, family member of Darling and Darcy. And then Wednesday, a family member of Ivy the Bulldog. Okay, well, thank you very much, Julie. Okay, and just praying for news for you. Thank you.